winter gets a bad rep, especially after Christmas. That's the whole joke from the Narnia book. But I love winter and have fallen more in love with it the more I have paid attention to it. Not the winter of December and Christmas, the winter which is new and not quite begun, but the winter that comes afterwards, the winter of January and February, which can seem long and bleak and monotonous. I never used to like these months. They were my least favorite which you won't be surprised to know isn't unusual, a YouGov poll found that January was people's least favourite month and February was a close second. Lola! Come on! <laughs> the reason I don't think I liked winter though, looking back, is that I didn't give myself the time or the space to see it. I used to wake up in the morning, see the colours of sunrise, watch them paint the treetops, pass through them, haunt them briefly, watch the colours spill and spiral, red, orange, pink. But then I would stop, return to work, forget, and it was only very rarely that I even noticed them. I worked and studied my way through winter without looking up. And then I did look up during lockdown when the pace was slower and there was less work to do. And there was so much beauty. On my daily walks, I saw catkins budding, frosted leaves, snowflakes with individual spires. It's above freezing, but that doesn't mean that it's warm. And I mean to really see it and notice it because winter months are beautiful. But in a much more nuanced way, you have to look maybe a little bit more carefully to find it, but when you do, it's vibrant. But I think these more nuanced beautiful things, these more nuanced uh, things that we appreciate, are there mostly because they exist alongside such harshness and such emptiness. The chickens have gone in for the night now. Look, look, he's up. Hey! I'm freaking you up. They usually go inside when the sun sets and the sun is going to set quite soon. But they will come out from the hutch because I've come out. And Beauty, like all other adjectives, is essentially comparative, so something is more beautiful when it's put in relation to something which maybe isn't as beautiful. I will use these to make cards with. So when you hear birdsong in January, it is, it is infinitely more special than if you were to hear that in August, where you're hearing birdsong all of the time. People say that they like the slower pace of life in winter, I hear a lot of people saying that online, but I don't know that it is actually slower. Uh, work and school rhythms mean that we don't get that natural lull that the natural world gets. It's slower for other things, for nature, but not really for ourselves because work, school timetables don't change just because it's January. I wonder if maybe it's just that we recognise 
that it should be slower, that there should be a slower pace of life. And I don't know what the answer to this is. It's a privilege to take things slower and to give yourself that time. But it's also something our bodies crave, that reset, that renewal, that rest. And I feel really lucky to be able to do that for the first time really this year. I personally like to do wrapping in big batches as opposed to one by one because then I can get all of the wrapping supplies out and wrap them properly. Basically all of my friends birthdays occur in one month which is February and so this is the month I always have the most presents to wrap. This isn't actually all of them even. And I wrap all of my presents in brown paper, brown recycled paper. And I really love this because it's versatile and you can use stamps or watercolor paint to customize them. So one thing I started doing this week, I probably won't do this every week, but it was a nice thing to do. I made this menu of drinks for a kind of home cafe and then in the afternoons I would ask my family what they'd like. And we could sit down with a baked treat and chat. So um, my mum asked for an almond cappuccino, which I made. The milk didn't froth all that well, as you can see, but it turned out okay. And then to eat, I made these mini banoffee biscuits, which actually are one of my favorite things ever to eat. They're so easy, but they're so delicious. I also love winter because of the cold. I love the feeling of cold. It just connects you to the world somehow. We're currently on a walk. This might sound a little odd, but I think it's something to do with feeling the world as opposed to just passing through it, which is what happens when it's more mild. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh. oh my gosh! I just love going out on long cold walks and then getting back in and getting a mug of tea and a hot water bottle and wrapping up in jumpers, maybe even hats. Scarlet apples are undeniably the best kind of apple. I feel like people have very strong opinions about the best variety of apple. Blakeney really loves Braeburn apples and so we just had this ongoing debate about what the superior kind of apple was. So let me know, what is your favourite? Personally, I think the worst apple is Pink Lady apples because they're often kind of mushy. Um, but with garlic apples, they have to be red. Like They have to be very red for, for them to be I, good. I'm going to do some journaling now. Winter is also an in-between time, between the old and the new year. In Charles Dickens's the, the Chimes, there's a fantastic description of the old year going out and the new year coming in. Both of these exist once. The old leaves on the ground, shriveled blackberries, reminders of what came before, but also what will replace it in a couple of months. The world is shedded, ready for the new year, and this is a time for us to do that too, to reflect, to shed what is no longer good for us, to choose our goals like we are choosing them for the first time. It's winter, yes, and, and things are dead and empty, but we can see their ghosts and we can see the ghosts also of the things that will rise up again this next year, the predecessors, the next generation. And there's beauty in that newness and also the possibility of that newness. We can leave parts of ourselves behind, though the essence and important parts of ourselves will be renewed and revived with spring.
because a lot changes in a year you grow a lot you're a very different person to the person you were last January and giving yourself the space and time to, to reevaluate and decide is important I think I've got this collection of poetry by Mary Oliver, it's called American Primitive. I keep coming across Mary Oliver quotes and I love everything I've read by her. I'm sitting down now to read it for the first time and just the first poem even, it's so tender. It's the best way to spend a Sunday. Also just on that, I mean, it's all about possibility. In winter, there is so much possibility. This is a time for planning, thinking, dreaming, which are all important parts of creating a reality. This book is excellent. I've only just started it, and it's probably my most anticipated book of this year. Possibility is exciting. And Dickinson sums this up very well in one of her poems where she says, I dwell in possibility. A fairer house in prose, more numerous of windows, superior of doors. There are options when you leave yourself open to possibilities. Ignore the state of the chair. I sit on this chair every day and the upholstery has just utterly been worn away. There's excitement. There are different ways to look and see. There are multiple windows in that liminal space between what came before and what is going to come next. So let yourself dwell in possibility in winter. And let yourself look through those windows, pass through those doors and notice those beautiful, nuanced, tiny beauties that winter does offer us. So just to end this video, I have a very short study with me segment because I've started learning Latin just very, very recently. Um, I'm trying to do it every day or at least once every two days. Here I was just writing up some key vocabulary in my notebook. I worked through the first chapter from this online textbook I've been using and wrote notes on that and I'm really glad I took these notes because they've been so helpful in the workbook exercises. I also made a note in my yearly planner to do Latin every day this week. I've just put it at the top of my to-do list and while I'm showing you the yearly planners I just want to make a note that the planners are going on sale for just £10 so you can get one of these planners usually £18.50 for just £10. So if you still don't have a planner, if you want to get more organised, if you want to stop your mind from getting too cluttered then I will leave a link in the description box for those. It's the planner I use every day and I really have tried to make it the perfect planner. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, that it maybe brought a moment of calm or peace or helped you to enjoy and appreciate winter. I hope that you dwell in the possibility of winter, as I say, and that you have more than just a productive week.